The online beauty community is well known for being filled with drama and crazy content creators. The eye cream is an exact ripoff of Tatcha. The component, everything. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, the it is. If you look up beauty community drama, something will probably show up. I haven't looked it up, but there's going to be an edit of someone typing beauty community drama and then showing you what pops up. Doesn't seem like, honestly, there's less than I thought, but still a lot of product sales in the beauty community. And that's cool. You know, it's cool. Cause I also have a product, <laughs> but before I did, I hated it. Just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. By the way, I love Dr. Pepper. I will, I will, this is my product. I own this. Do you guys know that? I own Dr. Pepper, that this is my thing. But I'm like a Dr. Phil doctor though, not like a physician, like a practicing physician. The point is these people make a lot of money off their viewers. There's a lot of money in the beauty community. That's sort of the point we're trying to make. Creators like James Charles, Jeffree Star, Laura Lee, my favorite, to be honest. They've all had drama surrounding their big chungus channels with millions of subscribers and billions of views. Money, 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 money. Another beauty influencer has some drama surrounding their channel as well. But the strange thing is, this drama has been going on for around four years now and counting. I, I'm heavily implying that it's still going on and now we're talking about it, guys. Get it? Do you understand? Are you keeping up? Good. Thank you. Thank you. The influencer we are talking about today is named Willie Jean. Today, we are taking a look at one girl who fabricated her entire life. An influencer whose following is mostly on Instagram. This person has been harassing and stalking a commentary YouTuber known as Primink for the last four years because of a video that he made calling her out for clearly view botting her account and photoshopping her photos. So four years ago, I made a video on a girl named Lily Jean. I'm sure everyone here remembers her. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. But in case you did it, she was this Instagram influencer who had a million followers, but when you went through her page, you started to notice some things were off. Not to mention Faking brand deals, all right? Make sure you put some subtitles up there. I've had, I've been working on, I have a little bit of a speech impediment. For example, she had all of these followers, but no one in the community actually knew who she was. She had posts from events that she appeared to go to, but when you looked at them, they were photoshopped and she never attended. And one of the weirdest things is that she would interact with a lot of accounts on her page, like they were her besties in real life, but the accounts were not real people. They were these weird made up characters that were a little racist, kind of homophobic. It was a crazy video, go watch it. Draw Drama is drama, but Lily Jean's willingness or I don't know, stubbornness to try to maintain her online image in spite of just having a lot of really weird sort of, it's not really even that big. It's not like she's got exposed for doing something horrible. It's just being weird. It's just like a weird mystery, almost like an ARG, like a horror movie. The persistence to uphold that bizarre image with mounting evidence in the favor of it all being strange, it makes her look insane 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 put a definition up of insane thank you primink recently came back and did a video exposing lil lily jeans lil jeans behavior the reason we are here today is because for the past four years lily and her mother have been doing some very <laughs> crazy stuff behind the scenes and it's reached the point where i can no longer stay silent and i believe this is potentially the final nail in the coffin for a content career this is unexpected this is an unexpected turn of events here. Very strange. So who is Primink? Well, Primink is a commentary channel. I think he's a guy, commentary guy, that's been relatively under the radar over the last few years. Recently on my own time, I've been looking into people that have had public scandals go on in their life. And I've been doing this because I've been curious to know what happens when all the bad publicity blows away and people stop caring about the situations. It's kind of like Oprah's Where Are They Now? but for scummy people. For the past five years or so, Primink has made videos on various interesting people online. A lot of the content that Primink makes is on influencers, different creators that fake aspects of their work or life, like Lily Jean, like this other person, and this fella. Not to mention the family channel that Primink called out for allegedly faking getting pregnant with a new baby. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Allegedly. Allegedly. For today, we are going to take a look at a vlogging family that were accused of faking a pregnancy announcement video, and then just a few days later, faking a miscarriage. Allegedly. Permink also called out a YouTuber for faking mental illnesses for views, something that a lot of people have called out on the internet before. If you look up faking mental illness. For all you concerned about me, sit on this and, you know, twist. 
go get laid or something. The crazy thing about Primink is that he's only posted 32 videos between July 2018 and March of 2020. That's less than two years and he grew a channel to 1 million subscribers. The videos are great. They're very well edited. The thumbnails are awesome. They're written. They're concise. They make sense. So this is Joe Exotic. No, that's not his real name. It's his stage name, but I like it. So that's what we're going to call him. Joe runs a channel on YouTube called Joe Exotic TV, which mainly focuses on showing off all the animals in the zoo that he owned slash worked at. It's not like other people's channels. These other losers in this space. Slop shit tubers, dude. Some of them are even gun obsessed. Do you know about that? Did you know that some of these people in the commentary community are gun obsessed? <laughs> this is an airsoft gun, actually. That's pretty impressive. Took me a long time to do what I've done, and it's not even impressive in any in any way shape or form so now when you're covering some wacky zany personalities like the people that primic has covered people who fixate on fame so much that they fake every aspect of their lives for themselves to appear more famous or to achieve more fame and they just wrap themselves in their content and they're not even people really they're just these images online they're just moving images you know i'm a moving image you know guys you guys moving images i remember i once saw a moving image of a small starving ethiopian boy and it made me it it galvanized me into sending him 20 cents a day it was a long time ago it's not even a joke i literally we actually did that pretty chill it makes sense that mr primink would make some enemies with this with these types of videos calling out these kinds of people who are just sort of a little unhinged maybe some some might say primink stopped uploading for a very long time years after he covered an individual named Lily Jean for supposedly faking her entire career online. On websites and in articles, Lily was portrayed kind of like this prodigy child who had all of these amazing talents. But then looking into her work, it didn't seem to match up with the hype. We need to learn a little bit more about this because it was Lily Jean the person who caused Primink to take multiple years off? I don't know. Let's get into Lily Jean then. Lily Jean Truman, otherwise known as Lily Jean Online, is a self-proclaimed actor, director, and writer in the beauty influencing community. All right, guys, it is a magical community of so many talented individuals, I think. <laughs> I think? I don't know. I'm, uh, I don't know anything about it. Lily's been posting regularly online since 2017. Her first YouTube video was about makeup, obviously. The golden era of makeup had begun. Post-war icons included Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn. This was considered an era of the mask effect. Thick and creamy foundations were used along with thick red matte lipsticks and pink lipsticks. And this would be her continued style of content until this day. She would continue to post on YouTube for a while and eventually create her Instagram account where she would gain most of her following. As of 2024, she has 1.4 million followers on her Instagram and posts regularly on both of her platforms, YouTube and Instagram. She loves posting. She's a big poster, big poster fella. All right, kind of wake me a little bit. Now, the difference between her Instagram account and her YouTube is astonishing. Her Instagram account has a lot of followers. Her YouTube account has 22,000, which is not that many. I don't, it's not very common to see a 22,000 subscriber channel belonging to someone who's able to make a full-time living off of YouTube. That's just not a thing. And Instagram, I have no idea how that works, to be honest. Sometimes I just post pictures of me with uh, uh, the ones I love, all right? Follow me on Instagram sometimes, maybe. I'm pretty gun obsessed on there. Not really. I'm pretty I'm pretty normal on there, I think. Uh, maybe not normal, but slick with it. <laughs> Chill with it, to be honest. A lot of people, including Primink, saw this as a suspicion and called the question how something like this is even possible. One day, a random person came across Lily's page and like you, was confused as to who this girl was. So he started a Reddit post to try to get some answers. Now, a logical conclusion to Lily's unknown fame would be that she bought followers and likes and that's why no one heard of her. The first honest instinct is, oh, they're just botting. That makes sense. Cause it happens a lot. People do it all the time. Have you ever seen the platform Kick? I don't know, man. I'll take a Kick deal. I'll take a Kick deal. As long as I'm allowed to shit on gambling and I can gamble and all the proceeds go directly to some kind of anti-gambling charity, I would love, I would gladly do that. Not really anti-gambling charities. If I were to accept a kick contract and I were to gamble online live and get paid a copious amount of money from stake, and let's say I could raise $5 million a year for charity, I would gamble every day if I could, seriously. That would be awesome. That sounds fun as f actually. Just every single day going to the slots. <laughs> 
come on, come on, come on. It's not stopping. <laughs> yeah, I heard you can, I heard you can make it go faster for charity though. What charity would you guys want me to donate money to? Let's say hypothetically speaking, not that that's going to happen, but it'd be funny to find out. In Priming's first video that was posted in February of 2020, he addressed this. Uh, he called out her rapid growth on Instagram and the lack of real accounts interacting with her posts. It all points to her paying for bots. But the psychotic part is not that Lily appears to have an entire network of fake friends and fans that she communicates with. No, that's not the psychotic part. The psychotic part is that every single one of these accounts has their own backstory. For example, this one is a Muslim girl who's struggling with conforming to her religion. This one is an unapologetic trans boy. This one is James, Lily's best friend who has a gay husband named Mario and is very good at design. And if you haven't picked up on it, these accounts are all very stereotypical of the fake people they portray. The gay guy's good at design, the Muslim girl dislikes her religion, the trans boy says yes all the time, and there is just dozens and dozens and dozens of these accounts all behaving the same, all with fake followers, all posting pictures of Lily. It's crazy. Plus, if you look at her analytics, you can see that she gets about two to three percent of an engagement rate from her audience, which means that she is 20 to 30,000 out of the million interact with her stuff, which is not that many. That's pretty low. But just looking at her stats, she went from gaining 150,000 followers in one month, which then drops to 6K the next month, and then goes back up to 150K, which is a huge red flag because followers shouldn't fluctuate that much. I also found a time frame where she went from receiving 20,000 likes on her post to only receiving about 100 in like a week, which heavily implies she stopped buying likes at one point, and her engagement rate is below 1%, meaning only 10,000 of her followers are active on her account. I could go into the comment pods I saw, the cross media deviation, etc. But that's too nerdy. I'm, I'm not even about that life. That's very low for someone who claims to be incredibly popular. And that's high for a botted account, to be honest. But also the 20 to 30,000 does match the followers on YouTube. So there's a chance that her real core audience is the only audience that's engaging, potentially, maybe there's a chance. Furthermore, Lily's mother, Laura, is her manager and helps her out behind the scenes. She claims to be a prop maker for the entertainment industry and was for 25 years, though there's no way to confirm this. As her IMDB page, she's credited for the movies that her and her daughter have made. Kind of strange. It's like, I don't really know what's going on here, to be honest. It's kind of a massive mystery, which is the only reason to watch this entire video. So it is very mysterious though, I'm gonna be honest. So once again, this plays into the shadiness that surrounds Lily at every single turn as her own mother seems to be lying about her own credentials on the internet to make what they are doing seem more and more legit. Is, a, is this a CIA thing? Is this a DARPA thing? Cause it's not that good. Lily was also homeschooled by her mom. Red flag. Red flag, uh, red flag, uh. <laughs> I was homeschooled by my mommy. She hates it when I say mommy. She hates it. I'm not gonna say that anymore. I don't like saying that either. <laughs> I hate it too, dude. What the fuck? Uh. So Lily was fairly limited in her exposure to other ideas and other people and perspectives, it seems, growing up. Perhaps causing a lot of the upcoming craziness we'll be discussing, guys. Cause I'm crazy and it's because I was homeschooled. So I'll really be able to give the proper perspective here. Cause I was also homeschooled, incredibly limited, had no outside perspectives. Uh, yeah, dude, gone obsessed, uh, cult, grew up in a cult, uh, only ate vegetables from mother earth. Primick also highlights how she photoshops images of herself at exclusive events like the Met Gala, which is wildly cringe. If you start looking closer at Lily's posts, you start to notice some problems. For example, the photo of Lily at the Met Gala. Once zoomed in, you would start to notice some weird distortion, which this is a sign of Photoshop. And after looking around, someone was able to find the exact photo it was photoshopped from. Lily covered up Katy Perry. That's, that's a war crime. I mean, this is next level cringe. Plus, being on the cover of Teen Vogue. The Teen Vogue magazine Lily was on the cover of also looked photoshopped, and it actually had to be because, funny enough, Teen Vogue doesn't even print magazines anymore. Absolutely astonishing levels of cringe. Holy that's awesome. I'm gonna start doing that. Either way, when trying to research this video, we tried to use the pictures that were used in Primix video, but since the video is released, she has scrubbed her Instagram of all evidence provided in Primix video. So it confirms what he's talking about in his video, that she is an incredibly shady creator who will do anything to just appear famous for no reason and preserve her online image. Primix video has 10 million views, by the way. That's a shit ton of views. 
and in my opinion, fully exposed Lily Jean as a fraudulent influencer. Now this is where the story becomes a real life Black Mirror episode. So we already established the fake followers and the fake posts, but the lies don't stop there. Not as a terrible shitty human being necessarily, kind of almost, but certainly as a fraudulent influencer. It's not real, it's fake. After uploading his video on Lily Jean for the next three or so years, Primink only uploaded one other video closely following his expose of Lily. It's the video that we briefly mentioned earlier of the YouTuber who faked mental illness for views. That was four years ago. Part of me feels a bit sorry for Breland because I know for someone to throw away all of their pride and dignity like she did, they must have been truly desperate. Later, Breland did end up losing her dream house. And that's what happens when you lose all your money. So, you know, she wasn't lying about being desperate. She was out of money, but at the same time, she could have just went to McDonald's and got a job. There was other options. You didn't have to go crazy. And after that video, Primic wouldn't upload until nine months ago where he uploaded a video talking about Marina Joyce, who allegedly faked her own kidnapping. Allegedly. So to put this all into perspective, everyone on the internet is convinced that Marina has been kidnapped. And instead of posting a simple video showing that she's fine, she or whoever is running the account is trying to get everyone to go to an event that doesn't exist. I'm not going to do any research into it. I'm just going to say allegedly. All right. It's what I do. Comment down below how factual the information. This is the truth channel. All right, baby girl. Then Primick didn't upload again until about a month ago when he uploaded an update to the situation in regard to Lily Jean, revealing that Lily had become quite obsessive and fixated on Primick and stalking him, trying to bring him down. Wow. How surprising! For the past four years, Lily and her mother have been doing some very <laughs> crazy stuff behind the scenes. So being the Truth Channel, I actually reached out to Primink and I asked him if he'd be interested in an interview. He said no. So anyways, let's move on. Just kidding. I sent him a bunch of questions and he answered them all uh, with like a f Dude, he's a yap fest. <laughs> this guy <laughs> loves yapping. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. He's real nice. How did you find out about Lily Jean to begin with? There was a Reddit post in r forward slash beauty guru tratter that was asking what was going on with Lily Jean because no one had heard about her and her account was partnering with so many brands. It was a very good write-up about Lily's whole situation and after reading through that, I began looking deeper into the situation and saw that everything she was doing was fake. Interesting. Thank you, Reddit. All right, what the f How soon after making your video on Lily did you see her react or respond? They have never really responded publicly to me. They have mentioned before that they don't care about my video because I'm a T channel, even though behind the scenes they've been trying to take it down for years. There was also a now deleted video where they tried to debunk lots of the claims in my video without really mentioning me. I'm not exactly sure why they haven't gone after me publicly because they have done this with many other smaller channels. I think they were probably worried I would make another video. I would be really worried if I was them, honestly, because like, your video is, because this video is really, it's like I'm talking to him right now, because your video is so good. I love watching that video. It's got 10 million views. It's pretty slick. This Primic guy, he's pretty chill with it. This Primic guy's pretty chill with it. Have you considered pursuing a lawsuit of defamation and slander against her after alleging that you were a pedo to try and provoke uh, YouTube into removing your content on her? If a lawsuit made sense, they would have been sued. Defamation slander is really hard to prove in a courtroom because you have to prove not only did the person purposely lie about you, but their lies financially hurt you. Since the video was never removed, it would be hard to prove any financial losses. This did change though when they started removing links to my video with DMCA's on Reddit and Twitter. Them fraudulently removing these links to my video arguably hurt the reach of the video and that could show a financial loss. I was told that I would have a good case at this point if I wanted to sue them. The problem now is that you can't sue someone who doesn't have money. If you sue a homeless person and win, there's nothing the courts can do to make that person pay. It's really hard suing homeless people. All right, it's really hard suing people who have enriched themselves off of your own money and then spent it and lost it in crypto gambling. It's hard, I know it's hard. When looking into the possibility of suing the Trumans, we discovered that they have filed two bankruptcies back to back, been evicted at least twice, owe over $20,000 in tax warrants, and have been sued numerous times from credit cards and other businesses for unpaid bills, etc. This has all happened within the last decade and no one in their household appears to have an actual job. From what we found, they appear to be abusing the financial system and squatting laws in New York to sustain their life. <laughs> That's insane, dude. No way Lily Jean's a squatter, allegedly. Allegedly. Holy shit. They rack up debt for years and then wipe it away with bankruptcies, which I'm kind of convinced is fraudulent, but I'm not a professional. I'm actually astonished that they have been able to do this for so long, but I think this is the reason they are so blatant with their abuse of the copyright systems. They really don't have much to lose. This is why my plan was to get the platform's attention versus going after them legally. The only thing that will actually hurt them is if Lily Jean loses her platforms. True. It's actually a really f good point. So yeah, that's Primink. Once again, I appreciate him so much for responding to that. Uh, the, that just so many, I asked him a lot of shit and he responded. 
thoughtfully, articulately, much appreciated. Seriously, go check out his channel, follow him on Twitter, Instagram, wherever he has a following. I don't know if he has a following on Instagram. He's no Lily Jean, that's for sure. He's kind of like the Lily Jean of the commentary community. Huge following on Instagram. I really do appreciate him helping me with this video. Normally, we don't do any effort or anything like that, so... <sighs> Anyways, on May 17th, Priming uploaded a video updating us on the situation in regard to Lily Jean. Hey guys, how's it going? We have no time for chit-chat. We have serious issues today. In this video, Priming also reveals that Lily and her mother have engaged in psychological warfare. This is using words or terms on someone, convincing a large group of people that someone is something to invalidate everything that they believe. Specifically in this case, Lily and her mother want to make a large group of people believe that Primink is a Nazi or a pedo. If you label someone as this thing, no one will ever want to associate with them because they are guilty by association, right? Logical fallacy, but still, we're correct. And in this case, God, he's neither of those things, so it's just Lily and or her mother being uh, just kind of wild, little loop, little loopy, fruit loop. Feel free to let the Primic Farm know that we have given their real names to the DA's office along with screenshots from their Discord server as they have a penchant for playing with children under 16. Which is, this is not just something unique to her, by the way, this happens a lot on the internet, like a lot. This happens a whole Shit time. Not only that, though, Lily and her mother would repeatedly try and take down Primic's video with copyright takedown request after copyright takedown request so many times. So when my video came out four years ago, ever since that day, Lily and her mother has been spamming my channel with copyright notices. And honestly, this in itself is completely fine. I deal with copyright notices a lot. The issue is what these emails contain. Fact, I asked Primic about this. This is what he had to say. You think this will be enough to make YouTube reevaluate their copyright system, considering the blatant abuse on display here and historically from some of their biggest creators like Brent Rivera and I Show Speed and Bobby Lee? Unfortunately, I don't think so. YouTube treats their support like they're constantly trying to put out fires. They only seem to care about issues when enough noise is being made, and then they will do the bare minimum to make that noise go away. They don't really proactively solve issues unless they are forced to. I'm hoping with the coming of AI, they will be able to identify abuse in their systems a lot more easily with the need, without the need of public campaigns. It's kind of bleak, and the only hope I have is that AI comes in and fixes their poorly run automated system. That's, that's, that's true, Primic. Thank you for the input. That's very wise. Do you have an estimated number of how many times she attempted to take your video down over the years? Nine attempts on the original video, one successful takedown on a second channel video that has been reversed. One Twitter DMCA has been reversed, and one Discord DMCA. Discord DMCA? That's a f thing, Primic? The point is, they really don't want people to know how fake the channel is. All this shit is just fake. It's all a lie. It's not real. Lily's not a famous person. There may be some small cult-like following, but overall, 99% of everything is just f It's fake. The followers are fake. The commenters are fake. The sponsors are fake. How do you even fake a f sponsor? By the way, this video is sponsored by Sour Boys. Go to sour.gg and buy some candy. If you thought after being exposed for faking her entire career, if you thought that, that would be enough to convince her to pursue a more honest and genuine future for your for her channel, you'd be wrong. <laughs> you'd be extremely mistaken, Chumley. All right, you'd be Chumley from Pawn Stars. You'd be the idiot. Well, this is what a f degenerate animal from Jersey does. <laughs> On top of a Primink taking this opportunity to reveal that Lily has attempted to essentially have his channel deleted with constant copyright takedowns. Illegal! DMCA takedown attempts. DMCA takedown attempts. Sorry, can't speak. Lily dug herself into a deeper hole. An even deeper, deeper, deeper hole. Like, I'm talking two corpses down. So now, beyond just trying to fake having an online influencer audience, she's Faking being an actress. Why? Haven't you heard what they're saying about me? I'm a degenerate animal. Faking having upcoming movie travelers. I would like to introduce you to our fair alien princess. Princess Glamorite. All right, even receiving awards. But then she'll pretend that it's like a trailer for a movie that's gonna be coming out. And then she'll take this trailer and she'll submit it to a bunch of like really tiny film festivals that like, I don't even know if they're real, honestly. And these film festivals are giving her awards for these trailers that are just clips of her acting. We just won another award. This one is from the Critics' Choice International Film Festival. She's posting all the time on YouTube with monologues and acting out scenes and has even edited together an acting reel, which is awesome, dude. I think I was giving a multi-denominational like, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, 
just everything, everybody vibe with my, my sweater. Here's my acting reel. Ah! I also love this scene she filmed from the hit Macbeth. Infamous purpose, give me the dance. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of a child. Or whatever the f*** it is. I think it's a f***ing Shakespearean play or something. I have, I have no idea. I saw it in Jimmy Neutron, bro. That's how I know about Macbeth. <laughs> right? I don't know anything about Macbeth. It is a tale told by an idiot. I am uncultured swine. I'm a Philistine. Or a Philistine or whatever the word is. I don't know. In this scene that is filmed remotely, Lily films hers horizontally and her filming partner, some guy, films his vertically. Pretty... Pretty epic stuff. She also has details of the awards that she's won on her website, which strangely couldn't be accessed by some of the members on the team, but I could go to it. I can go to it on my phone for some reason, but a couple of the guys can't. So it's like blocked maybe by Comcast or that ISP is blocking her website. It's very weird. Some of Lily's awards include award winner at the Gothamite Monthly Film Awards. What the f is a Gothamite? <laughs> Also, lest we forget, award winner at the Stingray International Film Festival or winner at Best Trailer from CriticsFilmChoiceAwards.com or Critics Choice International Film Festival. I, I don't know what it was actually called. Not to mention, guys, Lily Jean was a finalist at the Film Nest International Film Festival and an award winner at Cineplay. Are any of these things real? Not according to me. None of this matters. None of this matters. The video you're watching currently does not matter. And honestly, you don't matter. But as soon as you disengage, you matter. All right, guys? You don't matter to YouTube, all right? You don't matter to YouTube, but you matter to me. We did some research on these film festivals, and the first one we searched up was Gothamite, because I've never heard of it, and it's a hilarious name. And the Gothamite Film Festival alone is quite a rabbit hole. It's quite, quite the rabbit hole. Gothamite's website has almost no information, but it does share that there are two jurors, Anna Panova and Nana Abulidzi. Okay. We looked up these two women and their individual websites are also insane. Nana's website has a whole section talking about picturing sacrificing dogs and the main landing page has no information and the very next tab at the, the top is dog balination. So if you're just clicking down the tabs in order before you get any information on her, you're getting hit with dogs being sacrificed. It's insane. Dogs, it's horrible. Do not look it up. There's, they're in plastic bags. It's Disgusting. When we search for Anna Panova, the other juror for the Gothamite Film Festival, a website pops up with her name and links to all of the commercial work as well as a misspelling of the word experimental, where she shows off her experiential work. Or maybe it is experiential. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what she meant. We looked into the examples of her work and found that a lot of it just belongs to other people. So same like my, same as my, my work. Under her commercial work, she lists the 212 cover with Stella Maxwell, uh, among other things. And when we search 212 cover with Stella Maxwell, a site comes up that lists the photographer as Curtin Vassar, not Anna Panova. So I'm not sure what exactly is going on here. Once again, a very loosely researched, just quick rabbit hole. Bizarre though. So now back to Lily and Laura, the Trumans. I'm not sure I'd be one to flaunt awards from film festivals that don't exist. Film festivals that no one's heard of, especially ones that are incredibly suspect with just a simple Google search. That's just me though. I was homeschooled too, but like in a different way, I think. I'm starting to think that it's, what I went through is not the same as what most people go through. But I guess it would make sense that someone who's faked their entire career as an influencer would submit their work to a film festival that seems to be completely fabricated as well. Why would you fake a film festival? And also, why would someone talk about, why would someone have anything about dog sacrifices on their website? Lily, at this point, is checking every single box when it comes to being disingenuous and completely manufacturing every single aspect of your career. Not just the engagement, but also just awards that you're saying you're winning that give you everything that built this person's identity and this person's presence is fake. Every single thing, all of it. Lily is a synth from Fallout. 
All right. Primink also shares that she's been paying people on Fiverr to write puff piece articles about her and publish them on websites that make them seem legit. I should have done this when I was trying to get a Twitter verification a couple years ago, but then Elon Musk bought it, so it doesn't matter. What this is essentially is that you pay people very little money and they will write fake articles on you and they'll post it to places that look really legitimate. Primink even points out that some of these people fake their work as well, which is cool. And I spent a few hours combing over Fiverr until I found a listing from a person named Pay penguins for hire. So I scrolled through his product photos and he had this article posted as an example of like what he can do, but he cropped out the journalist's name to try to like hide what they're doing. So I looked up that article and I discovered it was written by Yitzi Weiner. But Yitzi Weiner <laughs> is the same guy who wrote Lily's article. The continued faking of content comments and work is only one aspect of Primix follow-up video. And now I want to talk about the things that Lily and her mom have been doing behind the scenes to stalk, harass, and try to ruin Primink's reputation. We mentioned at the beginning of this section and also in my interview with Primink, my questions that I asked him that he was kind enough to respond to, short notice on Twitter, that his initial video was bombarded with takedown requests. And whenever a takedown is requested, YouTube shares the reasoning given by the person who's trying to remove the video. It sends you an email and it shares the content. It's like, oh, because it's privacy or this is my name. You, you have to share your information. So Primink has shared what Lily Jean tried to claim as her reason for wanting the video taken down. Since the release of your video a month ago, you've stated that YouTube has taken more action into investigating claims from Lily and her mother against creators. But have you received any other attempts to take down this new video on YouTube? Since YouTube responded, I don't know of anyone else receiving strikes from them. YouTube told me that Lily was sent emails every time a video was reinstated and those emails warned against them that channel deletion of legal actions could be taken if they continue. They also let me know that they were on standby to monitor any new claims that were being sent in. I think the Trumans got the message that YouTube is no longer allowing them to make false claims. But over the years, as their claims got rejected over and over, I think something began to snap with them because the emails started to get more and more unhinged. The first taste of this unhinged behavior came in their fifth notice when they tried to use the ugly mermaid drawing. You remember that? They tried to use that one image to get the whole entire video removed. YouTube obviously declined it, and then they respond with, This video has created harm, terrorized a young girl who was 16 at the time, and is exploiting a minor. I suggest you remove my client's content immediately. We will be proceeding with legal action for negligence. She claims that Primink infringed upon her artwork, by showing a green mermaid she drew in his first video on her. And she is a very talented artist. We're going to redraw the mermaid right here for you guys. Wow, that's very nice. Thank you. We've got a real Lily Jean in the editing team. Good job, editor number three. How many people believe the narrative that she tried to spin that you were bullying a 16 year old with her art? He did what? Most people see past all the claims they make about anti-Semitism and bullying and whatnot. But every so often they will convince someone of their story and these people will start championing Lily Jean as a bullying survivor. One of the guys she convinced was named Defango and he went on to try and dox Creepshow art and myself. I mentioned him at the end of my first video. Eventually these people discover that Truman's story is fake and they backtrack. Defango recently did a live stream disavowing the Trumans after he tried defending them so hard. He still hates me though because he thinks I got his channel deleted. <laughs> That's true dude. That's true. That makes sense. He probably would hate you. I know of at least a handful of other people who they've convinced over the years that got on board to go after creators covering Lil G. Primix video is good. It's good. It's very measured, very metered. He's, he's make much better making content than I am, that's for sure. When Google or YouTube shot down this takedown request, Lily responded by claiming the video was created to harm and terrorize a young girl to also exploit a minor, and she threatened legal action if no action was taken against Primic, which is bold. That's very, very, very bold, because you can't just do stuff. There are consequences to actions, to lying, especially when you're inputting fake information into a legal system, like YouTube's Copyright tape. That's a that's a, a an extension of DMCA. That is a legal system. Now, just for clarity's sake, when my video was released, Lily was a full grown adult. And also, when I read this, the first thing I thought was, was she 16 when she made that mermaid drawing? Because that honestly makes it 10 times uglier. The gadgets in this I've got who's it's and what's it's going.
Now this email wasn't that crazy. I was a little like taken back, but like, honestly, I was like, eh, what are you gonna do? Since the release of your video a month ago, you've stated that YouTube has taken more action into investigating claims from Lily and her mother against creators. But have you received any other attempts to take down this new video on YouTube? Since YouTube responded, I don't know of anyone else receiving strikes from them. YouTube told me that Lily was sent emails every time a video was reinstated and those emails warned against them that channel deletion of legal actions could be taken if they continued. They also let me know that they were on standby to monitor any new claims that were being sent in. I think the Trumans got the message that YouTube is no longer allowing them to make false claims. So yeah, this, another lie. Because Lily Jean was an adult when the video was uploaded and Priming shows this. They tried taking down Priming's video by copywriting the picture that Lily used in the thumbnail and filing a DMCA or a copyright takedown for the use of copyrighted material. The next thing they did is that they took the photo that I used in my thumbnail and they went and got it registered for like an official copyright with the US government. They got like a fancy paper and like documents and then they took those documents to YouTube and they're like, hey YouTube, we have this photo registered with the government. You need to take it down. And then YouTube was like, no, sorry. It's still fair use, El Bozo. So YouTube responded again by denying that request saying that Primink was well within the fair use. So they responded by accusing him of verbal which is crazy. They said that Primink is a content farm in both the United Kingdom and Malaysia, and they tried to compel YouTube once again by telling them to abide by the law, calling Primink's video disgusting, slanderous, and libelous, which we need to keep that in mind because that will be important very soon. The response to this rejection was crazy. The user has violated my rights and is using my copyrighted photo on their cover. As the rights owner, I demand this to be removed immediately. This is not fair use. This is a violation. This is verbal ra <laughs> what? What? That's a little unhinged, right? Am I overreacting to think that's crazy? <laughs> Did she ever try and talk to you? Or did she get to go straight to having the video get struck, try to have the video strike down? Neither of them have ever reached out to me or responded to me reaching out to them. Again, I have no idea why this is because they have spoken with a bunch of other YouTubers like Curtis Price, who is arguably a lot more harsh with his coverage. There was one time right after my video released that Lily Jean went live on Instagram. I can't recall if she even mentioned me or my video, but I asked her to send me her YouTube analytics so I could see if her engagement was legit and she refused to. Interesting. That's deep. Here is the link to the public catalog for the visual material Lily Jean filed. And you can see that it was registered in 2022, well after the video was uploaded, which is, you know, another just massive bit of proof. <laughs> Shut up. So yeah, we've got Lily accusing Primink of defamation and slander. You wouldn't expect that she would do the exact thing that she's accusing someone of doing. You wouldn't think so, but you might at this point in the video, because I'm starting to wonder, is she even real? Is Lily even real? Is, is Lily's mom even real? The only pictures on Lily's mom's page are just pictures of Lily. And also, Gothamite? Glamorite? Uh, what is going on here? There's a lot of weird shit. I think we live in a simulation though, to be honest. Kind of what I'm reading. Reading into it a little bit. So if you didn't think that would happen, Check out this following claim that she made to YouTube. She would once again, for some reason, say that Primink has a channel that thrives on defamation, uh, and then in the same sentence, say that he fosters the discussion, sharing of images, and contact with minors. We expect you to promptly react and stop giving courtesy to a channel that thrives on defamation, slander, and fosters sexual discussion, shared photos, and contact with minors on its YouTube Discord server called Primic Cult 8.0. Further, feel free to let the Primic farm know that we have given their real names to the DA's office along with screenshots from their Discord server as they have a penchant for playing with children under 16 years old. Now that it's just defamation. That's not true at all. But when this still doesn't work, she would then go out of her way to learn Primink's real name and his address as well. His business name, phone number, all of it. What a freaking weirdo. In this email, they start it with my private business name, my entire real name, and my entire address down to my house number. And then instead of calling me Primink, like they've done for every single email for the past four years, they now address me as Mr. My Last Name. So that's a great way to open an email, totally normal. Since she has sent you your own legal name and address, have you experienced any real world issues stemming from her possession of your private information? Luckily, nothing IRL 
has taken place. I have very good security and my audience is very respectful of my privacy. The biggest concern that I have now that this information is public is swattings or potential stalkers. Once your name and address is out there, it never goes away, sadly, and taking away that one barrier is quite worrying, to say the least. At this point, Lily's team would start referring to Primink as Mr. His Real Last Name. Like they were trying to intimidate him with the potential of being doxxed uh, to force him to take the videos down and bend to their will. This didn't just extend to YouTube. However, as Primink has a Discord server that's public and he posted a link to his own video in his own Discord server and someone filed a copyright strike against that. Do you have an estimated number of how many times she attempted to take your video down over the years? Nine attempts on the original video, one successful takedown on a second channel video that has been reversed. One Twitter DMCA has been reversed, and one Discord DMCA. Discord DMCA? That's a fucking thing, Primink? Yes. I wonder who it was. <laughs> I didn't even know you could get copyright strikes in Discords. That's kind of weird. How's that even work? Discord has some really strange rules. However, it wasn't just Primink that Lily had gone after. Many other content creators that had covered the situation had their content taken down successfully by Lily Jean. For the past four years, Lily Jean and her mother have been blatantly abusing the copyright system. And my channel's protected. I'm not sure how or why, but my channel has like a force field on it. And any copyright claims that come to my channel get shut down real quick. But smaller creators are not protected. If you just look up Lily Jean copyright strike on YouTube, you'll see dozens of creators who have had their videos removed and strikes put on their channel from these false claims. I even had one of my videos removed from a second channel. We were testing recreating my voice in AI and then dubbing it to Spanish. Primic did post an update on the copyright abuse from Lily Jean on Twitter, and it's a good update. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool update. YouTube investigated every single claim that was made by Lily and her mom, Laura, or whatever the her name is, Lore? I don't even know. You've shown a few examples, but how many creators have you spoken to that have had their videos taken down by her? Is this a pretty widespread issue? I have spoken with about a dozen creators who have dealt with these strikes. A person I spoke to who was also doing a deep dive into the situation told me that there were 37 channels they were aware of that had some sort of run-in with the Trumans. And this was just on YouTube. I know there are dozens, if not hundreds more, encounters like this on platforms such as Reddit and Twitter. And many of the videos were reinstated and strikes that were given were undone, which is rare. YouTube very rarely actually changes their stance on stuff. For example, I'm still dealing with the strike from a P. Diddy video. Now TMZ has a goddamn show about the whole thing that I made a video about. Absolute bullshit. However, 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 however. This does not mean that the problem is over, and I'm sure Lily Jean and her mom will continue to try and silence detractors and continue just lying and talking about, I mean, just making fake shit up constantly. Do they even exist? Is this, are we in the mind of Lily Jean currently and she's Stromboli pulling the strings? I'm a real boy! <laughs> or whatever. You know, I don't know, comment down. What do you guys think? It's mind boggling that someone has an entirely 100% fabricated, manufactured career online in spite of like, not not having money or not really like it's not a a thing of wealth like the tickle king it's not that it's not just someone with some kind of weird insane tick in their mind becoming hyper obsessed with something and then developing a vendetta against someone exposing that thing this is like there's no money in it or anything it's just like for fame weird it makes sense there's no career it's all manufactured she's still been trying to shit on people though and as recently as june 5th someone wrote an article about her extensive copyright abuse uh, abuse and how did she respond to it guys by copyright striking it on google i didn't know i didn't know it was possible the article was by a guy named stephen asharch and he posted that on twitter asking people to share the article to spread it around since it could no longer be found on google because google took it down for some reason it is at this point we open ourselves to much speculation in regard to lily jean and her mom and exactly what is going on out there in their minds like why are they doing this why are they copyright striking people why is it fake why do they care they're not making money is it's generally the reason people want fame is for money but they're faking brand deals they're faking all these different strange relationships and film awards and the naming schemes and the dog sacrifice. I mean, there's a lot of weird shit that's going on with all of this. And it's uh, it's weird. I'm kind of grateful, to be honest, to be able to watch this from afar and on the YouTube scene and just like see all this un unfold. I remember watching Premix video when it first came out. Shit went viral. It's just crazy. It's fucking just wild, wild stuff. Lily Jean still at it, by the way. June 5th took the article down from that one guy. Despite everything that has come out against her, it, she's learned absolutely nothing. We briefly discussed her botting on Instagram. She continues to this day to use bots and fake followers. I mean, look at all this stuff. It's all fake as 
In one of her pinned posts, which is not even her most popular post, the comment section is flooded with bots. And it's just obvious. Anyone with a functioning brain can see that no one comments this stuff. Nobody comments this stuff. There are accounts that are posting three or four times in a row saying different things in the same ways or same things in different ways. It's weird. It's just bizarre to see anyone commenting 20 times on one post. If you look into some of the accounts, it's just, it's, they're spamming. That's all they do. They're cookie cutter. It's all fake. It's hundred percent fake still. Not to mention they all have similar follower counts and the naming schemes are all real. There is one Swedish pop star though. That's a big fan of Lily Jean. I think I have no idea, dude. On top of this, Lily still posting her acting tapes to both YouTube and Instagram. She's continuously portraying herself as a movie star. It's pretty cool, man. But once again, seems like just her and her mom promote the work and they, uh, they're they bad actors. They're assholes. People wouldn't care. It, like the whole manufacturing everything, that's fine. Just don't lie and slander and defame people and threaten, threaten to dox them and threaten lawsuits. And like, what what is wrong with you? I just don't understand. It's, it's, you're playing a game. And when people start to say, oh, you're playing a game, you're like, eh, I'm not playing a game. Eh. Shut up. Shut up. Go lay down or something. Go sacrifice more dogs at the Gothamite Festival or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't know if those things are related at all, by the way. I have no idea. It's just a, a light bit of research. Also, a little funny thing in the bio of her YouTube channel, it states that all rights to her content are hers and there is no allowance for usage or anything along those lines. But that's just fair use is, is a thing. Fair use is an actual thing. Uh, so there's not really anything she can do to prevent people from talking about her. And the more and more she does things like this, the more and more people are going to talk about her. So, and not in like a good way either. I would be glad to be like, oh, she's changed and stuff. And she apologized. That'd be cra crazy. You know, then she'd probably get some followers and it would be over, but no. So yeah, it's all fake. It's all lame. It's all cringe. Another astonishing benchmark for Lily is that she has been nominated for 10 awards and won nine. And that was all in 2024. So she's really ramping up her her performance as a as a thesp uh, thespian. I think they're called thespians. I'm not sure. Six of these awards are for my favorite film. We showed this earlier. The short film called The Trapper Trap. The Rise of Princess Glothamite. Glamorite. Princess Glamorite. Not Gothamite. They're not connected. There's no dog sacrifice in the story at all. Hi, my name is Lily Jean, and I play Sabrina, aka Princess Glamorite, in The Trapper Trap, The Rise of Princess Glamorite. When I was writing this movie, I don't know what went through my head other than I just wanted to really laugh and my acting coach Edgardo Rubio, Ed, hello, <laughs> I, I think he really inspired me to go for it and just dig into my craziest wildest imagination. It is a comedy short in which she is the lead actress. It won best trailer at three different film festivals as well as best poster and best costume design. Also best woman's film, let's not forget that, best short film and best web series. Right. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I have no idea what the f is going on. This is a really interesting situation. Uh, do some research if you'd like. Watch all of Primink's videos. Go sub to him. Follow him on Twitter. Follow him around. I appreciate him for uh, responding to the DM so so kindly. That was that was massive. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Be safe. Drive safe.